The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Birch. Hey everybody, this is Birch, and I recognize on the offset, this may come across as a video of uh, hypocrisy, of me saying, hey, comics need to change, try new things, and I'm about to complain about something that's changed and is a new thing. But I, I don't think it's as binary a choice as that. I think a lot of the comic arguments get into this, uh, you know, this this kind of, you know, gotcha kind of moment of you read a comic, you don't like it, you know, there's something bad about it or it doesn't kind of ring true, doesn't, the story's not good. And you're like, I don't like this. And then immediately if you're like, oh, so you just want things to be always the way they were. And then so you get into these arguments that are kind of phony arguments. Like, I think there's there's a huge middle ground between I want comics to never change and always be the same. And I'd like this. I mean, you know, this comic is written terrible. So I think there's, you know, a, I, I like new developments. I like change in comics, but I do also want them written well. I don't think that that should be a, you know, either or kind of equation. I think you should be able to get, you know, good story plus change together in one. I think that would be the goal. So um, I'm curious if any of you are reading the new Chip Zdarsky Batman run. Uh, this run started out with uh, kind of the fail-safe uh, issue, the cybernetic Batman that kind of fucked things up a little bit, and then we got Batman in the multiverse, and then now we got Batman back, and we're moving right. In. We we had the uh, Night Terrors business, which ended with kind of a kind of a tacked on thing at the end which was uh oh dead man was uh you know inhabiting batman's body for so long that he he wore batman out now this doesn't make any real sense so first of all how long was night terrors going on you know just in terms of sheer time i, I got the feeling like that this this was like a one night like the entire comic was told over like one night maybe two days maybe and so the premise, though, is that Batman got so exhausted by the long-term inhabitation of his body from Dead Man, but long-term being a day or two, that he basically went into a sleep coma for eight weeks. And the way this is handled kind of sets up the uh, laziness of comics, because they're like, oh, shit, you've been out for eight weeks, Batman. And in that time, basically, Catwoman's come in and she's hired a bunch of uh, criminals, and basically, rather than doing regular crimes, she's trained them to go steal from the rich, and then this somehow reduces crime. I was reading an article on Newsarama, and they're like, you gotta admit, Catwoman's plan makes a lot of sense. No, it doesn't. Stop. Stop with that. What, what, do you, what, the, what the hell are you even talking about? Are you saying, like, in New York... If uh, some super criminal organized some of cat burglars to rob all the rich, that that would reduce crime? So that, like, the logic is like, ah, oh, now all these petty criminals are uh, stealing from the rich and it's keeping them happy so they don't have time to be the Joker's henchman. It's like, I, I don't know about you guys, but when they uh, showcase, like, the Joker's henchmen, I never got the feeling that, like, these were, like, savvy criminal businessmen who were like, uh, I'm, only, I'm only working for the Joker because he's got a dental plan. No, the people who they would show working for the Joker were lunatics, like the Joker. That was kind of always the deal. So you're telling me that, no, because we're hiring a bunch of uh, petty criminals to do all the crime, that suddenly, like, they don't have time to be Killer Croc and Riddler and Joker henchmen? That I, I'm sorry, that makes no goddamn sense at all. But anyway, this article's like, you know, maybe we should try something where all the rich people get robbed by cat burglars, and that, that would be the solve for society. Like, okay, at some point you're like, what the, what the hell are you even talking about? It's a, like, I, I miss the old days of comic arguments like, could, the, could Thor beat up Shazam? Because if Thor could control lightning and Shazam had some lightning powers, like, what would that, like, could, could did Thor basically make Shazam like a meat puppet that he, I mean, like those were stupid arguments, but they were somehow infinitely more fun than, you know, what would be a good plan is uh, robbing from all the rich. Like I had to fuck off with all that. I mean, what are you even talking about? Anyway, um, Chip Zdarsky came from Marvel where, 
you know, he went from being uh, the other guy in Sex Criminals to kind of a legitimate writer. He wrote uh, some Spider-Man books that got some critical acclaim. He did the Daredevil run that a lot of people really liked. I'm going to say something that may be heresy on this channel, but I thought the Daredevil run was okay. I don't think it was amazing. And I think the Mark Wade Daredevil run was probably better. I'm just going to throw that out there. I, I think the uh, Zdarsky Daredevil run was, I, it was okay. I think a lot of people were excited because uh, Marco Cinchetta, or Ch is that? Yeah, Marco Cinchetta was doing the art. It was good art. But a lot of that, like Daredevil accidentally is uh, responsible for somebody's death, and then there's a cop that's after him, and then he's going to take over the hand, and he's going to bury Electra. Like, I don't know. I, 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 to me, a lot of that stuff felt like stud writing. I'm not saying it was bad. But I remember going on like uh, uh, Wes's uh, live stream, and, and everybody's like, "Oh, Daredevil is definitely the best comic of the week." I'm like, "Eh, I mean, I, again, granted, is it better than you know Steve Orlando's Marauders?" Well, I mean, of course, you know, the, like eating at Arby's is better than Steve Orlando's Marauders, but it it still it never felt great to me. And so he's moved over to Batman, which is a high-profile gig. Uh, Zdarsky has become one of the more big-name writers in comics, one of the, the brands. But nothing he's done on Batman has particularly been exciting to me. It, it, it feels like, um, I don't know, James Tinney and Light, the, the fail-safe stuff felt like that. The multiverse stuff I, I just felt kind of uninspired to me. I, I, I don't know. They, they chopped off Batman's hand. But even the writing where the rest of that family is like, oh, fuck, you got a cybernetic hand. What happened to you? He's like, ah, nothing. Don't worry about it. Okay. Like, I, I, like the, it just doesn't, none of this fits. And so you get this, um, these early issues of, uh, you know, the Batman Catwoman battle. And it just, like, all this stuff feels very, very, not, not cliche. It's just, it's very forced. It's like, oh, Batman and Catwoman, let me do like, even to the point where the Bat families walk around like, man, I hate it when mom and dad argue. What it, they were never established as mom and dad. Like, to the Bat family, generally, even with all the things that happened with Bat Cat and the relationship and everything else, it was, uh, it was basically, uh, you know, positioned as, you know, Batman and Catwoman are uh, fucking from time to time. And, you know, they, they like each other, but it, you know, this, it, it doesn't seem to work out as a relationship, but damn, all that leather and sweat and, you know, moistness is going to lead to some good times. That's always how it, like, that's how the Bat family seemed to react to it. Now they're just like, oh my God, the parents are fighting. Like, uh, how, that's a weird thing for Red Hood to say. Very weird. But, uh, but anyway, I, it, it dawns on me though, that it's an example of, I think people want to love Zdarsky's Batman because he is a name that's going to come out of the last 10 years as somebody who has written some good comics, and he absolutely has. Said I wasn't a, I didn't think his Daredevil run was particularly amazing, but, you know, uh, is there worse? Well, yeah, I think we're about to get Saladin Ahmed's bat, you know, Daredevil, so that's definitely going to suck. And Teeny Howard on Catwoman is certainly no treat, but so, I, I mean, definitely he's got to index high on those ends. But it gets me back to, like, should Batman be this hard? Like, taking a step back, we've had... And, and by the way, the backdrop and all is the thing that uh, Zdarsky is clearly leading to is the uh, kind of weird rehash of the Grant Morrison, Zin uh, you know, persona of Batman that... I, you know, you get, you read it and you kind of, at least the way I read it is, so we're trying to basically mine a bunch of stuff that Grant Morrison established. I, okay. I mean, uh, we could do that, but I kind of would rather, you know, just read Morrison's ideas. I, I don't really need to see a, another writer who's, you know, bluntly less talented than Grant Morrison kind of run Grant Morrison concepts. I, I just, and, and he, you kind of, you wind up reading those comics, and this is where I started the video at, going, why don't we just get, like, Batman 
I like 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 here's the crazy part. Couldn't you do twelve issues, a, a nice long twelve issue arc, where I don't know, Killer Croc uh, gets manipulated by some smarter villain, some shadowy villain, like say Lex Luthor, or you know Doctor Savannah, or somebody like that, and basically they, you know, break a bunch of the levees and they flood Gotham. So the streets are, you know, underwater. And it's like the the water's up kind of two stories and base and killer croc gets, uh, I don't know, gifted with some mutated kind of alligator creatures or whatever. And it basically becomes a Batman has to fight, you know, in this new world where the streets are now dangerous because they're full of water and creatures. And it's like killer crocs Gotham for a change. This isn't an, I'm not saying this is an amazing story idea by any ch- stretch of the imagination. But you could easily do a 6 to 12 issue arc where, you know, the city becomes very dangerous. Batman is trying to save lives, but, you know, there's no longer ground for him to deal with. And uh, Killer Croc is like, you know, just kind of making it like, it, you know, not not zombie level of, of things, but basically people are getting murdered and, and uh, you know, there's fear in Gotham and it's just a new thing for him to deal with. So you could get a good artist on that. You could put some pretty cool visuals together. And you basically make a classic villain of Batman very dangerous. And Batman has to figure out how to stop it. Obviously, you know, the city being flooded doesn't help. And you do have to answer, like, why isn't the Flash or Green Lantern or Superman just coming and fix the problem in, like, five seconds? So you, you'd have to figure out something there. But you could do a pretty interesting kind of 48 hours of terror in Gotham that would have some horror elements and, and you know, click into this. You could do similar arcs with the Riddler, with Penguin, Hell with punchline. If you want to do that, you don't have to go back to Joker. You do something with you know. There, there's all these characters with kind of untapped potential, and you can you can you know basically have Batman run some very classic, very kind of exciting adventures where you don't need to do a dumb gimmick. You don't need to like, well, but what if his alter ego possessed him and then started being more brutal? What if his uh, side piece Catwoman decided to rob the rich? And how would you respond to that? And we should make some. Uh, by the way, for all the people who say that comic books are, um, you know, basically obsessed with the social social agenda, and I don't, I you know, as you know, if you listen to this channel for a length of time, I don't fully agree with that. But it's hard to argue it when they're running a storyline where Catwoman is running a criminal organization to steal from the rich. And Batman is written to go, my parents were rich. And everybody's like, ah, fuck you, Bruce. Like, and and you have people writing articles about it going, Bruce did sound really out of touch there, like one of the 1%. What are you even talking about? Like, like all this feels incredibly out of touch, like some kind of communist wet dream. And so it's, it, but my point here is it's hard to argue with the uh, people who are doing endless rage bait videos about how commies have taken over all comics when you're running a storyline where you're trying to introduce some moral gray area behind Batman and a person who is stealing from the rich. Like, I, I get that they're rich, and every, and people want to be rich, and hell, if you're making, you know, dirt money on comics, I'm sure you have some resentment for the rich, sure, but there is no moral gray area here. You have to bend over and complete knots to go, well, you know, maybe what Catwoman's doing is a good idea. No, it's not. Stop being stop being stupid. No. And I mean, like, like Teeny Howard's gonna be able to carry that storyline anywhere. But anyway. Um do you like Zadarsky on Batman? Is this exciting to you? Does, does, are you into this run? I've just found this run to be very like very blah. And that's being generous. So I'm, I'm just curious what you think of this new run. Let me know in the comments below. Are you reading it? Do you like it? As it compared to previous runs, you had Kenny and you had Tom King. Uh, okay, I'll say this. At the current moment of Zadarsky's run versus Tom King's run, it's tough for me. If we're talking about, you know, the first half of Tom King's run before issue 50, the aborted wedding, I'm probably picking Tom King's run. I'm just saying now, the second half was just shit awful. So, you know, I, I, I don't know, but I've read both, but it's close for me. 
And I realize I may destroy all credibility because definitely there's a lot of people on this channel who absolutely despise Tom King. But I, uh, I, I don't know. I'm at the point like reading this uh, Bat Cat Bat War. I, I, I'm like, eh, you know, maybe bring back Tom King. I'm, I'm, I'm probably not there, but, but because there's eighty hundred other writers who would do a better job. But uh, this isn't fun. Are you enjoying it? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening.